Hey guys, this is Seth here with the return of yet another episode of this lovely week of post-E3 2017 reactions. And, well, now we get to the interesting companies. Like, the the latter half of things are actually starting to pick up now, because now it's time to actually talk about the big three. Uh, there was Microsoft. Today, uh, today is from Microsoft. They really didn't have... They, pro well, in terms of Microsoft, they were the only company out of the big three to actually show off hardware. Maybe because of Project Scorpio, which we now know is the Xbox One X. Uh, uh, X. Stupid name. Uh, I don't understand why companies don't do a better job in naming their consoles nowadays, but Xbox One X is the name of, the, of Project Scorpio. It is very... It's a price that not many people are pleased about, especially considering only the only real benefit that this conference, uh, this con uh, console seems to have, is 4K. And boy, was Microsoft really obsessed with it. They kept bringing it up. That and exclusive. They love 4K and exclusive during their whole conference, and it got very tiring, especially considering a lot of the games that Microsoft showed off were not actually exclusives. They really didn't do a good job. They were. They finally announced the release date for Cuphead, though. I give them credit for that. That was something I really wanted to see at E3. Probably the only actual thing I was looking forward to, to be fair, at E3, that I personally you know, felt was going to be of interest. But, unfortunately, it was... They didn't show that much in the... As far as I know, in terms of Cuphead gameplay, there really hasn't been much of it this year. They For a game that's supposed to be out on September 29th, in just a few months, it really didn't go well. Um, like, it, it's baffling that there's no gameplay on it. It's weird. That said, though... They did okay. There was definitely some awkward moments. They had a Porsche there that they kept obsessing over, which was not only just it, it wasn't even game related. Like they put a car on stage, talked about how new it was and the features and stuff like that. And it's like no one cares. This isn't this isn't an auto show. It's a gaming show. It's supposed to be about games, technical stuff, about hard, like gaming hardware, gaming tech. That's what this is. It's nothing to do with a car. That was probably the only time someone in the conference actually talked about uh, stuff in E3 that was not game related. Which was, honestly, I would consider that an improvement. Usually there's more game yapping non-game related yapping than usual um, from companies during the conferences, but this year that wasn't the case. Um, Microsoft, however, Xbox One S or X really just wasn't worth it. I mean, the price is just too, to me, too expensive. And to be honest, I don't really think it's going to change Microsoft's standing at all. I mean, it just feels like Microsoft didn't really do anything to fix their problems. They just continued with them, if anything. Um, they did show off some decent games, though. They showed off the game that EA had teased the night before. Didn't really catch my interest, but hey, new IPs are never a bad thing. But... But, that said... That said, I, I just, Microsoft, I think, what may be most surprising about Microsoft, though, is that they mentioned, they referenced Nintendo in their Minecraft trailer. They actually, their Minecraft uh, cross-platform trailer, they actually referenced Nintendo, which was interesting. So yet more love to Nintendo. That happened at this year's E3, and Nintendo didn't even need to do, need, didn't even need to say anything about it. J 
just... It's just that... It was really, again, one of those conferences that didn't really have a whole lot of variety. They had a lot of games, and they did have segments for hardware, you know, for their Xbox One X, but it didn't really... Like I said, the console didn't really change their standing right now. I, I don't think their situation has really improved because of E3, you know, what we know from E3, and... To be honest, I don't really think there's going to be, um, I don't think there's going to be really anything of note for Microsoft for a while, so, yeah. But, we'll see. I mean, they've gotten better. I, I feel like ever since they, they stopped their Connect support, Microsoft has definitely improved for the conferences. They're not as bad as they used to. But I still think the underlying causes, the situations they have right now with their con console, their Xbox One, is still not solved. They still don't really have any exclusives on the Xbox One. They still seem to be having an issue with the pricing of their hardware. They seem to be more obsessed with power than actual games, even though you need games on your console. It You can have the most powerful console in the world... Which it seems that they're trying to go for here. But ultimately, if you don't have anything to play on it, no one's going to want to buy it. It's just how it goes. No one's going to buy a console if that doesn't have games to support it. It has always been the case and always will. And there's just nothing on this console that you can really buy that you can't already get on another console. This is a similar issue that Nintendo had with the Wii U. Excluding their, you know, excluding obviously their, their uh, first party stuff, but, you know... It started. The difference is that eventually the Wii U branched off from that, and it did get better from that. You know, it started to get a better library and started to get more exclusives. Microsoft has not done that yet. Their their console does not have anything worth getting. There's no incentive to get an Xbox One, and there's even less incentive to get an Xbox One X because considering either a, a lot of people already have an Xbox One itself. And B, as I said, the only thing the Xbox One X seems to do is 4K. You're not really going to notice 4K, to be honest with you. You're not going to notice. Um, it isn't worth it. Now, they did announce backwards compatibility with original Xbox games. That is nice. That, I think, is going to help them out a little. I feel like it's too late, though. I feel like now that the Xbox One has been out for like four or five years, it's just too late now. But, that said, they did have quite a few games to show off. It's just, you know, a variety was needed. But in any case, guys, that's all I can really say about Microsoft. It really... They went... They had, I believe, the longest conference of E3. It was, no doubt, the company that had the longest conference. Uh, but that was mainly due to just the fact that, like I said, they had hardware to show off. But, you know... They, they really do have some work to do still, but the, the, their comments didn't really um, turn out well. But that said, I will see you guys tomorrow for Sony. Sony's going to be interesting to talk about because Sony was the one that people had high expectations going into this. Uh, and if not high expectations, a feeling of, of curiosity is just what they were going to do. Because so, because of what Sony has done in the past few years has been quite interesting. You never know what Sony's going to do, and this was no exception. However, I don't think it was quite what people were expecting in a good way. So unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> but that said, I will see you all tomorrow for Sony. But for now, this is SSS signing out. Sign our guys.